Good day, fellow investors. A very interesting business that offers inflation protection and already a good return thanks to low valuation. Let's discuss Ajo Delhaize, a US retailer with a European strong arm. So, Conin Lake uh, Ajo Delhaize, it's a Dutch company, but 66% of sales come from the US. The market capitalization is 27 billion euro. It is also traded in the US as an RDR. You can check that the P ratio is just 11. There is a good dividend yield of 3.6%, 1 billion spent in buybacks. That adds another shareholder return of 3%. Over the last 20 years, it has been compounding good, stable, and well. This scare here was because of an accounting scandal and issues in the US that they almost sent them bankrupt, but those issues have been sold and the trend simply continues compounding. Let's go through the business. You probably, if you're from the Netherlands or from the US, you probably shopped at Food Lion, Albert Heijn, Ball.com, Ethos, Belgium, Delhaize. If you like drinking, you've been here in the Netherlands. There is also some smaller Serbia, etc. But the most important are Albert Heijn, Ball.com, and of course the retailers in the US. If you look at the total sales, 45 billion, 60% comes from the US and 30 billion from Europe. Online sales stronger in Europe, but the US is also catching up. The investing positives that we have there are inflation protection, 7.5% yield from buybacks and dividends already there, good business that offers the potential of growing, and for European investors, a US dollar hedge and a euro inflationary hedge as groceries have increased prices even a little bit more than the real inflation and the real need to increase prices. Now, infrastructure is already there, which protects me from inflation because if you don't need to build this with inflation you are protected as i said they have increased food prices and if there is more inflation they can increase the food prices even more because the infrastructure is there and it is unlikely that there will be competitors going for lower prices especially in the well-established trenches that a strong company like this one has in the Netherlands, for example. This allowed for strong dividend growth and they will try to keep growing the dividend. They are spending 1 billion of buybacks, as I said. So earnings per share are already 2.34 expected for 2020. And if they can just keep the numbers stable and slow growth, there will be good returns ahead. There was the discussion of an IPO of the Amazon of the Netherlands that's now likely postponed, but over time we'll see what happens there. For European investors, if they want more US dollar exposure, as the trend for the euro is clear and definitely the ECB has less power than the Fed, we might also want to get some US exposures with Albert Heijn as it is differentiated there. The ambitions are pretty interesting, slow 1-2% sales growth per year. If they can keep on increasing the profitability of the online things, the cash flows should be there strong and stable. High single digit growth of earnings per share over time should lead to good returns based on the current dividend too. The biggest risk is a recession and uh, we never know what kind of recession we'll have ahead, whether it will be European, just US, that is always an unknown. But if a recession hits, all the other companies will be likely much worse hit than a grocery like Albert Heijn. All right, let's do a valuation. I have taken this year's expected earnings per share. I have put in a growth rate of 6% for the next five years, including the buybacks, 3% from buybacks, 3% inflation, let's say, then conservatively 4%. If we put a 12.5% discount rate, then the intrinsic value is 20 euros per share. But 
10% discount rate is okay for investors globally, I think. And let's put an average P ratio of 15. And then you can see that the stock is now currently fairly priced for a 10% return. Of course, with a more conservative P ratio down the road, it is a little bit cheaper, but 15 should be okay. In a very possible scenario with 3% inflation, 3% buybacks and 2% organic growth, P ratio 15, the company is undervalued for a 10% return and you can see the fair value there, intrinsic value at 32. In a worst case recession scenario with just 2% growth rates and a 10 terminal multiple down the road, which is bad, then you can expect a decline of 40% to a present value of 17. I have just for reference calculated the present value here only of the dividends where the payout is usually 40%. So fairly priced for a 10% return with the biggest risk being a 40% decline in case of a recession. I think that it could reach the teens but then it should be a really, really bad recession, both in the US and in Europe. So if the recession isn't that bad, then this could return 10% returns over the long term, stable, boring company compounding over time. And that's it. Of course, the biggest risk is a recession that we discussed yesterday in a bottom-up analysis. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.